فعاش القلب إخلاصا وافر تتحومك الطير تحلق في ثقافاتي وتنهل من روبا الخير السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته We can try that again. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. We always praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his household, his companions. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless them, to bless every one of us, to grant us all success and goodness in this world and to be able to live our lives in a way that we can maximize on the reward by reaching out to one another as humankind and at the same time serving the Almighty primarily. Amen. My brothers, my sisters, this morning I got up to devastating news about bombings that happened or blasts that took place in Sri Lanka while the Easter festivities are going on. And uh, this happened in several churches as well as some hotels and so on. And I think it would be wrong for me to commence without mentioning this and condemning it very, very strongly. We are Muslimin. We believe in peace. And actually what happens in terms of war and, and difficulty, hardship comes about after such blasts upon the Muslims more than anyone else. Definitely our thoughts are with the victims and we do not condone in any way such activity. In fact, I want to spend a moment telling you that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, has expressly prohibited harming people in their places of worship to the degree that at a time of war, he warned his own companions to say, whoever enters the monastery is safe. If they enter the place of worship, they are safe. The reason is it means they are not even participating in the war. Whoever puts the weapons down are safe. You don't harm a woman, you don't destroy infrastructure, you don't destroy the trees, and so on. You don't harm the elderly, you don't attack those who don't want to attack you. This was at a time of war. Imagine at a time of peace. People are doing this, no one has claimed responsibility. I don't know, but you know, as Muslims, every time something like this happens, we're just waiting, hoping that it wasn't a Muslim who did this. Because definitely not in my name, and I don't think ever in your name either. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us protection. And definitely we pray for peace, and we pray for stability. We, we are the ones who would reach out to others just like they have reached out to us at our time of need. May the Almighty grant us all goodness. So I start off this way because the month of Ramadan is coming. It is a month of compassion. It is a month of reaching out. It is a month of spreading wings. It is a month whereby the hearts are softened. We cannot ever have an accepted Ramadan with hard hearts. We need to soften the hearts. The people with the most difficult behavior tend to soften up during the month of Ramadan. I have visited prisons in some countries across the globe, in some countries, and you know, it's called the correctional services, some call it prisons, etc. But the idea is to rehabilitate people after they've committed a crime or done something wrong to be able to emerge from there, people who've pondered, reflected and changed their lives, perhaps to be, you know, taken back into society, into community in a way that they would be able to contribute once again towards the upliftment of the society and community. And when I visited some of these prisons, especially in South Africa, quite a few. And the wardens have always said, you know, during Ramadan, these criminals, they become such that you would never believe they were even able to commit a crime. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us that way throughout the year. This is why we are taught that Ramadan is supposed to be a training for how you will be living throughout the year. You know, we control the food intake in Ramadan in one way, and we should be controlling the food intake throughout the year in another way. I'm not allowed to just put in my mouth whatever I want throughout the year. I can't just take something without looking at whether it's halal or haram, permissible or prohibited, and I cannot just take it and put it in my mouth and think to myself, do you know what? 
That's it. If I believe in Allah in the last day, I need to be concerned. What am I eating? Am I eating something okay? Did I buy it with money that was earned in a proper, pure way? Or did I purchase it with money that was perhaps dirty or stolen? Or I got it through deception and so on. If that's the case, what blessings do I want? What do I want from the Almighty? What do you think the energy that is derived from such food uh, is going to make you do? Do you really think that which went in negative is going to come out in terms of energy positive? No. So it's important for us to discipline ourselves. Islam is about discipline. It's about rules, regulations, governing the pure life that would actually make you content in this world, happy, looking forward to the Almighty, ensuring that we have we have built a relationship with the maker who made us so that when we return to him, we're happy and we have succeeded in this world and the next. And for this reason, while we're on earth, one of the ways of earning the pleasure of the Almighty is actually to reach out to the other creatures that the same Almighty has made. And I have said this thousands of times. In Ramadan, many people give out their charities, they give out zakat, all those zakat, and its calculation has nothing to do with Ramadan, for your information. Zakat and the calculation of zakat has nothing to do with the month of Ramadan specifically. But if you have managed to end that Islamic year where your zakat is due in a way that its giving will, co will coincide with the month of Ramadan, alhamdulillah. If, for example, I brought it forward a little bit to be given in the month of Ramadan because I wanted the blessings of it, yes, alhamdulillah, it's good. Perhaps I will achieve a great reward and maybe a greater reward. But you cannot delay your zakat just because you are waiting for the month of Ramadan. No, no, no. Zakat and its calculation, like I said a moment ago, is not connected to the month of Ramadan. Remember this. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness and may Allah make us even more charitable. But in the month of Ramadan, we reach out to people in a way that our character and conduct should show that we are changed. That's why the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, says, whoever is not going to ensure the correct use of their tongues and whoever is going to engage in abusive language and that which is false in terms of false accusation, false witness, etc., while they're abstaining from food and drink, have actually wasted their time staying away from food and drink because Allah says, I don't need that they have stayed away from their food and drink. I don't need it. In the same way in Ramadan, we're conscious about what should be going in and not be going into our mouths. We should be conscious about what comes out of the same mouth. Many of us forget this. For us, if you say, what's Ramadan all about? You say it's about not eating, right? Yesterday I was speaking in Glasgow and I said, and I'm going to say it again. It's strange how Ramadan is a month of not eating. And if you go to our kitchens right now, we're piling up, stockpiling for the month of Ramadan with all the savories and the food that we're going to be munching away during the month of not eating. Subhanallah. It's like the minute the, the sun sets and that's it. We like get to this, you know, a table laid with food and we're about to do qada. You know, qada means to recompense yourself for something you've missed. That's not what Ramadan is all about. But anyway, just as we make sure we are conscious about what goes into our mouths in terms of food, we need to be conscious about what comes out of our mouths in terms of language. Whoever is not going to be conscious about what comes out of his mouth because he were to blurt or because he blurts out words that are abusive and false in their nature. Allah doesn't need the fact that he stayed away from food and drink. For what? It's a wholesome act of worship. It's discipline. If you were to fast, you didn't say bad words, part of your fast. You didn't eat or drink, part of your fast. You didn't engage in permissible sexual activity, part of your fast. When I say permissible, I say I'm meaning that which is otherwise permissible. And, but, but, you didn't pray through the day. Uh, what did you do? Blemish in the fast such 
that its reward is almost nullified, if anything. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. So you have people, because the fast is long, they say, well, I'm going to be sleeping. So you sleep through, through dhuhr, you sleep through asr, and you sometimes even sleep through maghrib, and then you get up, hey, is the time done? Yeah, it's done, quickly, give me the, you know, the, the date, for example. Hang on, hang on. But you didn't even fulfill your salah. What happened? My brothers and sisters, if you want to benefit from the month, you need to do it in a proper way. It's a package. You cannot just... Do what you feel and call it, it's a fa- call it a fast. And that's the reason why those who are abused during Ramadan, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, talks about it. If someone swears you, he says, if you're abused verbally while fasting, make it clear, I'm not going to abuse you back. You know what? I'm fasting. فَلْيَقُلْ إِنِّي صَائِلْ if someone is abused, he or she should say, I'm fasting, which means relax. I'm on cool mode here, subhanallah. And that should train us to react and retaliate to any form of abuse and hate throughout the year. Today we have a difficulty and we witness it online more than anywhere else because now the, the, the globe has become a little village. What is it? Someone uh, attacks you, you attack them back. I said a few days ago in another country that if someone calls you the name of one animal, (laughs) you call them the names of all the animals in the zoo. It didn't help. How did it make you a better person? But if they called you an animal and you happen to look back at them and just say, crazy, it would be better than to swear them back. If you swore them back, you become the same. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us. So the month of Ramadan, the preparation for it commences from now. We have this beautiful month that we, that we are in right now, the month of Sha'ban. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to fast during this month more than other months. He, it was picking up. Because in the run up to Ramadan, he already started getting into the mode of Ramadan. Number one, he's taught us twice a week, it's voluntary, but recommended to fast. Rewarding, should I say. Twice a week, it's voluntary, but rewarding to fast. Which days? Monday and Thursday. The days are set out for you. The the days of the week, the times set out for you. Try it out. The doctors who are not even Muslim and The experts who are not even Muslim have said that this intermittent fasting is so healthy for you. People have started it for a medical reason. But Islam teaches us that from way back in the day. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, hardly missed the Monday and the Thursday. Right? Subhanallah. Are we going to try that inshallah? And you know what? Not only will you gain the closeness of the Almighty, but as a bonus, your health improves. As a bonus, you begin to lose a little bit of weight, mashallah. People are trying, right? Trying hard. You lose a little bit of weight. You know, my brothers and sisters, something strange, something very strange. We are prepared to do things for the outward appearance of ourselves. We'll go to the gym and we'll sweat it out. And I said yesterday in my talk, 45 minutes of sweat a day will change your life. Did you hear that? And I'm serious, 45 minutes of sweat a day will change your mental condition into something much more positive, emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually, in all ways, 45 minutes of sweat. Okay, that's not a hadith, okay, that's not a hadith. But at the same time, it's drawn from the fact that we as Muslimin are taught to be fit, we're taught to be healthy, look after your health, it's an amana. that's where it's drawn from. So there's no 45 minutes mentioned in any revelation, but that's just me saying, you know, look after yourselves, exercise, do something, sweat it out. Many of us eat and drink and that's it, and we're not worried until the day something goes wrong with our health and then we look at it. But Allah's blessed us with all these little rules and regulations. When Islam has rules, many people think and say to themselves, too many rules, too many regulations. But if you look at them, they are only there for your broader, long-term and short-term benefit. That's what they're there for. 
You remain disciplined. You are focused. You are sober. You have good habits. You haven't messed your life and yourself. You're clean. You concentrate on your family. You concentrate on values and morals. You know, you look at your children. You spend time with them. You're supposed to be spending time with them. All this is part of building you as a person. Hence, we have the discipline, the rules. If I can stay away from water, which is otherwise something very good. If I can stay away from water during the fast, surely outside the fast, alcohol is something I wouldn't even look at if it displeases the Almighty. Right? It would become much easier. If you can stay away from your own wife for a short space of time during the daylight hours of Ramadan, just the daylight hours of Ramadan, surely when you're invited towards something that is sinful, you would actually just, without even thinking, turn away. Because you're used to this control, this discipline. You're used to it. It's nature to you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us. It has to soften this heart. If it doesn't, then we're not achieving. So pre-Ramadan, we need to know there is a little run-up. MashaAllah, tabarakallah. We have the three fasts in the middle of the month. They're called the white days. Why white days? Because of the moon and its color during those days. That's why. 13th, 14th and 15th of the lunar month. The hadith says you fast those days. It's a sunnah. Each good deed is multiplied by 10. So if you were to fast 3 multiplied by 10, it's as good as having fasted the entire month. Subhanallah. Right? Right? It's as good as having fasted the entire month. You get a reward for it. So that gives you the two every week plus the three in the middle. Amazing. You're used to fasting intermittent. Every other day we're fasting. And when we fast this year, I want you to become conscious of your character. Every year we are conscious about the food. This year, I want you to watch your character. Because... If you watch your character, you will achieve a wholesome reward for the fast. If you don't watch your character, the extended blessings you're meant to be achieving by fasting will be diminished. Your farad, your compulsory obligation has been done. But will you achieve the broader achievement? No. It's like when a person goes for hajj, the pilgrimage. Their life is supposed to change. When they come back, there is supposed to be a sign in them of improvement of spirituality, connection to the Almighty, as well as character and conduct. Why are these two so important? I'll tell you in a moment. But if a person returns from pilgrimage and they have not changed much, yes, they may have fulfilled an obligation, but the broader reward will not be achieved. The broader benefit will not be achieved. And this is why, when I say two things are needed, your relationship with the Almighty and your your character and conduct. Because your relationship with the Almighty is you and your maker, the one you're going to go back to. You need to have a good relationship with Him. We call it taqwa Allah, to be conscious of Allah. You know, to be fearful of displeasing the Almighty. When we say fearful, I explained it yesterday, I'm explaining it again today to say, that fear is not like, oh, I'm scared, I'm frightened, etc. You know, the Almighty. It is out of the love of the Almighty, you fear to earn His wrath. You fear to be cast in His punishment. You fear to displease Him. When you're in love with someone, you fear to make them upset or angry, etc., etc. So it is a fear, but a beautiful fear. Because fear can be explained in different ways, you know. When there is a snake here, the way you fear the snake is different from the way you are fearful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Very different. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deep understanding. So you develop the relationship with Allah. While you are developing your relationship with Allah, one thing will stand out. Do you know what it is? That the same Allah has made so many other things besides me. I'm not such a big deal here. I'm just one, a number. I'm here on a mission. What's the mission? To prove that I'm going to be the best of the creation as possible that I can. 
Obviously, the best of creation, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the messengers of the Almighty, Jesus may peace be upon him, uh, Ibrahim may peace be upon him, Moses, Musa alayhi salam, all these were the best of creation in 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 the sense that they were the chosen ones for, by Allah subhanahu wa taala, with Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam being at the top. That's what we believe. But when it comes to us, we need to strive to be the best from those around us. That's why the Prophet, peace be upon him, always says, the best from amongst you is one who does this. The best from amongst you is the one who has this characteristic. And I'll get to this just now. All those characteristics are actually connected to your character. All of them. Why? Because once you recognize that the Maker has made other creatures besides you, you will start asking yourself, well, what is my relationship supposed to be with the other creatures of the same maker? Imagine you have one mother, one father, and you have brothers and sisters, and you are supposed to be connected to your brothers and sisters before everybody else, right? You're supposed to be connected to them. The Almighty chose that you're going to be having brothers and sisters. So, he says there is a great reward in ensuring that your relationship with your family is good. It is strong. For that reason, even if your parents are not Muslim, the Quran tells you to be respectful, to be kind and to serve them. That's what the Quran says. Right? We need to be respectful, kind and serve them. It is through that service that we will be achieving the Pleasure of the Almighty. But someone might say, but these are not Muslims. So what? Allah says, you're still sahibuhuma fi dunya ma'roofan. You live with them in a good way, in an acceptable way. Because the Creator is the Almighty and there is a channel through which the same Creator decided to create you. And that was your parents. You didn't choose, He chose. You follow? Even if they're bad, I've had a person come to me and say, you know, my, my dad sexually abused me from the age of seven. And I was like, what? Do you still want me to be good to your dad? Well, we need to protect the young girl, right? We need to protect her. And we need to help her. But at the same time, we need to understand that whether you like your father or not, he is your father. He could be a criminal. We will deal with that criminal behavior. We will protect people from injustice, definitely. We have to. If he needs to be jailed or punished, he will be. But you know what? Just be respectful about how we're going to deal with this whole thing. And we must deal with it. At the same time, you cannot deny that he is your father. Your son perpetrates a crime. You're embarrassed. It's still your son. No matter how embarrassed you are, he's still your son. There is nothing you're ever going to do that would actually make the statement, he's not my son, true from a biological perspective. So there are rights that you have to fulfill either way. But most of us, subhanAllah, are petty matters and we just don't want to have anything to do with people. And sometimes, unfortunately, some people think that our religion teaches us that the minute a person is not a Muslim, you must distance and disassociate completely. That is wrong. You fulfill the rights of those who are not Muslim. They have rights. In fact, if anything, you're supposed to be dealing with them in a way that they see the beauty of the faith and they're attracted to it because that's what happened to us or our forefathers when they reverted to Islam. Subhanallah. Every non-Muslim is actually not yet a Muslim, according to us. That's how much hope we have to say, subhanAllah, they may. And even if they don't, and even if they choose not to, does that mean we must become bad? We must be bad to them? No, we don't. So that second element of character becomes important because it is now connected to the rest of the creation of the same maker. Hence, these two issues are of importance. And these are the two main things that will get us into paradise. The companions of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, were very, very curious. And they said, O oh Messenger, tell us, the people of paradise, what are the two characteristics that would, or what are the characteristics that would have made them enter paradise? We want to know so that we can work on those characteristics. And you know what he says? Taqwa Allahi wa husnul khuluqi. The development of the relationship with the Almighty and the character and conduct of the individuals. The goodness of character. Brothers and sisters, inshallah, I'll be talking to you a little bit later. For now, I think we're, we've just run out of time. But inshallah, I will be coming back to you and we will speak about how, inshallah, to soften this heart 
that definitely needs softening by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah bless you all. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad.